Welcome on in, guys. Tobin here with you. Thanks for checking out the channel. Hope you're doing well there. If you guys could subscribe here, that means a lot to me. If you guys could subscribe to the Tobin and Leroy Show weekdays, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on the WQM YouTube page. You guys can watch us there. You can download us on all your podcast platforms. We'll be back together after a vacay, long weekend, tomorrow, return. Meanwhile, uh, before the show today, bright and early, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, Mike McDaniel was addressing the media. Talked a lot of stuff. Talked a lot of uh, about a lot of things, a lot of interesting things that are going on with your Miami Dolphins. Um, I think the most newsworthy thing that he mentioned today was likely that uh, the Miami Dolphins did offer a contract to Odell Beckham Jr., though they uh, still seem to be a part on the money. And uh, his quote on it was, things went great with him, did make him an offer, business takes time, especially with players such as Odell, who have a phenomenal career, still has a really good football in front of him, and has options. So I think those conversations will be ongoing, and we'll see where they go. I don't live in a world of crystal balling. I do stay in my lane as a coach, and I'm definitely ready to coach him when we come to an agreement. I think both sides are trying to work towards that. We'll see what happens, a.k.a. Not quite the money yet, but very interested. I would be very curious to see what Mike McDaniel has up his sleeve in regards to an Odell Beckham Jr. on his roster. I do think this, uh, we talked about this a little bit last week, but just a Dolphins team that uh, needs to diversify a little bit. And I do think that Mike McDaniel has shown, especially with the big personalities, especially with the stars. He treats stars like stars. And in fact, calls out stars to get more out of stars. I think part of the reason that he was frustrated with Vic Fangio last year and what was going on there was because his offensive players can go directly to him. He'll take their input. He'll have that line. And it seemed like a guy like Jalen Ramsey, who he also has a close relationship with, a good professional relationship with, you know, it could only go so far. So I do think that this uh, this could work for anybody who's interested in uh, headaches. Um think that it'll be interesting i mean look do i think they got to go pay him what the ravens paid him last year no i think that's crazy sauce i I, I don't think that's something that you go do but i um i'm I'm definitely for the dolphins taking big swings for sure and this was uh getting to one of his points today because he was asked about the idea of the dolphins potentially being in a reset year which is what some pundits had said after the christian wilkins deal Uh, went through with the Raiders is that the Dolphins were heading towards a reset, that they were not going to be in the mindset of competition and being uh, a contender anymore, which I think is a little bit crazy. Uh, You know, the, the point of where the Dolphins are at with the roster, the money they've doled out, the picks that they've given up, the idea that the Dolphins would just go full into reset mode. I think you would have that idea pretty early before the draft where the Dolphins are trying to you know, trade off guys that they're going to owe contracts to or trade off really good win now players and bring back. We've seen what the reset is, the real reset, not a, not a mini reset, not a, you know, not a, not a, um, you know, a tweak here or there, which is what this appears to be. Even though you lose a star player in Christian Wilkins, didn't feel like the Dolphins were going towards a rebound. I just feel like the Dolphins, I think in this, in this case with Wilkins, that you're Chris Greer, you stick to a point on a negotiation, and you weren't going to budge off of it, even if it meant Christian Wilkins had beat you in the bet, and he was going to get his money somewhere else, that you were going to be in the situation where I'm, I still have my point, I have my, and I'm not, I'm not going to break off of that. And certain GMs do get to that point, but Mike McDaniel was asked today about the idea of the Dolphins being. In a reset. This is from uh, Adam Beasley, Pro Football Network. Love you, Bees. And uh, he was asked about the idea that the Dolphins uh, would have lowered expectations outside. And he said, quote, you're talking to a guy that is very well versed in expectations or lack thereof just in life. I don't really attach any emotion to it. I can tell you one thing. Every single player that was on the team last year and the year before that and every single player that we've added this offseason and every single coach that we've added this offseason – Their expectations are to help fulfill goals unaccomplished. 
Uh, there's been zero time spent thinking about anything less bold or less aggressive than the way that we approach every season to trivialize a season and say, for me, I have a hard time expressing what our team is going to be like as the head coach without even being around the team. I think everybody's individual expectations are extremely high, and the more people lower their expectations, it's kind of erroneous and irrelevant. So, not taking too much stock into the idea. Erroneous and irrelevant for anybody who's out here thinking that the Miami Dolphins are lowering their expectations. And, and why would that be the case? Like, look, it is unbelievably frustrating the way the Miami Dolphins ended last year. I do not want to lose sight of that. I do not want to minimalize the embarrassment of the idea that the Miami Dolphins went from number one scoring offense, greatest show on surf, best celebrations in the sport, most fun team in the league, to completely pooping the bed at the end of the season. Couldn't beat anybody decent other than the Cowboys. Unbelievable meltdown against the Tennessee Titans. Went from possibly having home field advantage to the playoffs to having to freeze your ass off in the coldest game ever. And all of that was their own doing. All of it was. And I think Mike McDaniel had a big part in it. In the way he called this offense and the way that he went through some things. And yes, the Miami Dolphins also had some very legitimate reasons to why things shriveled up at the end. And a big reason for that was health and the defense being obliterated and the offensive line maybe going through too many shifts and all that stuff. You know, Waddle being banged up. Most are not being available. Tyreek Hill not being what he was in the first three-fourths of the season. But none of it, I think, would put the Dolphins, Stephen Ross and Chris Greer and Mike McDaniel in the spot where they'd say to themselves, we're not close. We're not close. Because it's, it, 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 it felt too close and too much of it being snatched away for them to really look at it and know that they, they had their best effort. Now, will it all go into this year? Is this like the year where it likely gets determined? I would say that's very fair. I would say that's very fair. I think the Dolphins are going into a year where this will be the year where they'll determine, hey, two is good enough. The offense is good enough. The coach is good enough. The GM is good enough. All that stuff I do think is like, all right, truly before all the rebuilds and all the Flores stuff and everything that went into there, talking about this tandem with a with a QB they believe in, all that stuff, this is year three. The wins have improved. You've seen the cute stuff that they can do. But now how do they get that into a place where they're actually harmoniously getting themselves into a place to go win? And really, really win. And that's going to be the interesting thing, but I don't think any of their behavior has shown that they're up for reset. I think that they just looked and said, well, we got a price point with Christian Wilkins. We're not going to break that. And we got to find other ways to fix it and find better ways to fix it and get ourselves going. But the Dolphins showed in the rest of their free agent action think argue on paper that they upgraded in basically every other spot that they had to replace somebody on that defense. It's going to look very different. Um, and defense apparently is going to look very different this year, man. There's a lot of people complaining about the, uh, the hip drop tackle being banned and everybody being upset that you can't tackle anymore. And all this, the thing is, and, and the players association came out uh, against it. And I don't know how you play defense anymore. Quite frankly, um, it's tough. Uh, hell, look, I've been watching, you know, seven, eight-year-olds play flag football with my, my son lately, and the, the, even grabbing the flag can be tough sometimes. Um, although he had, I, I will say, he had nose for the flag by, by like, the middle of the season. The kid was like Zach Thomas pulling flags. He was doing fantastic, so shout out to Tommy. The, um, but as an aside, you know, Javon Holland comes out today and he goes, breaking news, tackling band. And it is tough to feel for like a defense like, man, what do you do with this? And then when you're taking defense more out of the game year in and year out, even though the Chiefs defense was as big a part of them winning than Mahomes and Kelsey were, do, do front offices look at that and say, eh, there's only a certain place because they're taking it more out of the game as possible, becoming more of an offensive game than ever 
So I do wonder what what uh, what thought goes into that with this. But Mike McDaniel doesn't want to believe that they're headed towards any kind of a rebuild or any kind of a reset. He's looking at this and saying, no, I want to go win 13 games this year and not deny our spot as number one team or any of that type of stuff. He's got a lot to prove. He's got a lot to prove for uh, adjustments. There was a, t- a point, too, today where he was uh, asked about would he did he think about giving up play calling and apparently it said that he had given it some thought. Now, I didn't see, I haven't heard the sound, so I don't know what his tone was. It's a little, this is one thing with Mike McDaniel. Um, you know, I've been waiting for the press conference to come out and all this stuff, but it's a little bit tough with Mike McDaniel because sometimes he can be very snarky. He can be very, you know, making the jokey jokes. So when he says he thought long and hard, I don't know if that's a McDaniel goofiness long and hard or if that's a legitimate, like he did give some thought to giving up play calling. Um, I don't think he's going to do that just because I think he's been waiting for this opportunity to call plays his entire life. Even though he may be a, it's very possible that Mike McDaniel is a better manager of people than he is actually a caller of football. It's possible, you know, just because people can look at Mike McDaniel. This guy could actually be a genuinely great leader of people. And he doesn't call the game that, you know, Kyle Shanahan does or Andy Reid does and it doesn't mean that he's not he's not going to be successful at coaching you know they may just find a place where it's like hey uh you maybe would put your efficiency more elsewhere it's fine like there there are good coaches who are not calling their own stuff and maybe that is something that will get more thought but it doesn't sound like he's ready to give up those reins just yet um if they don't have a good year and he does keep his job, maybe that's the next step for the Miami Dolphins. But I think for his standpoint, he wants the reins on that and feels like if he is going to control the ship, he's going to control the ship on his terms. So I found that to be an interesting thing. Uh, the other thing was with uh, with Tua and the contract, nothing really newsworthy other than he doesn't expect Tua to sp- skip voluntary workouts. And I got to tell you, I would be stunned if that happened with Tua. I think their relationship is is such and so strong that him skipping uh, voluntary workouts. I not only and I'm not a person who who minds what I didn't care that Christian Wilkins didn't play in drills anyway. Um, but I got to tell you, with Mike McDaniel and the 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 investment he's given into Tua, if Tua did actually hold out on voluntary OTAs. It'd be it, that would be such a bad look for Tua, and I think in a way Mike McDaniel maybe knows that because he's given Tua a lot of new life into his career. He's been on the record as such in, in saying that. So I would be very surprised if Tua did some kind of a holdout, hold in, and it's a, I think that the idea that the Dolphins do appear to be actively working towards this and making a trying to make a deal happen. If you got to the point where Tua actually did hold out, especially for a quarterback in camps where you're not getting touched, that would be such a weak sauce. Look, I couldn't even imagine Tua doing it. Um, so not surprising to hear that that Mike McDaniel has the confidence that his, uh, his QB is going to show up in a year that he is not going to put the description of reset, rebuild, or any of that stuff because it is erroneous and irrelevant.